A supermax prison is a unit that houses prisoners considered to be too dangerous either to themselves or other prisoners in a regular prison. Regular prison, which isolates prisoners too dangerous for regular society. In the United States, the ADX Florence is the last federal supermax and the toughest prison in the country. Home to dangerous men like drug kingpin Joaquin El Chapo Guzman, life inside the Alcatraz of the Rockies, as it is called, is just what you'd expect. And yet, shocking all the same. The history of the Florence Supermax Prison. The concept of an uber secure maximum security prison didn't just come out of nowhere. Officials at the Federal Bureau of Prisons found themselves dealing with a major problem. How were they going to punish some of the most violent and dangerous criminals out there? The ones that proved themselves a problem to everyone around them. In 1983, Thomas Silverstein and Clayton Fountain, members of the Aryan Brotherhood, fatally stabbed correctional officers Merle Klutz and Robert Hoffman inside Marion Penitentiary. The stabbings were blamed on inadequate prison design and Federal Bureau of Prisons Director Norman Carlson argued for the creation of a new type of facility. This new facility would be one where the most uncontrollable inmates could be isolated from correction officers and other prisoners for security and safety. Under his guidance, Marion began to be operated in permanent lockdown for the next two decades. It would become a model for the design of the Florence Supermax. Norman Carlson argued that as draconian as these measures were, they were the only way to deal with inmates who have absolutely no concern for human life. The Florence Supermax opened its gates on November 30th, 1994, after Marion was changed into a medium security prison. It took over as the go-to prison for some of America's most dangerous criminals and took the spot as the toughest prison in the country. How does the Florence Supermax work? Located on the outskirts of Florence, a small rural town in Colorado, the Florence Supermax covers 37 acres. It first started housing inmates in 1994, and today, it's home to 361 of the country's most high-profile criminals. We're talking serial killers, terrorists, drug kingpins, and even cult leaders. The prison houses inmates at six different security levels, and each different unit serves specific purposes, like the control unit, where inmates who have committed serious conduct violations or acts of violence at other institutions are kept. It also houses high-level members of dangerous organizations, like prison gangs. There's the H unit, which houses inmates who are members of groups designated as terror groups by the Department of Justice, or inmates who have had special administrative measures placed on them, like the underwear bomber, Umar Abdul Mutalab. The cells are 75 square feet, slightly smaller than the typical cells because of the absence of a shower. H-unit prisoners are escorted to a shower several days a week, a routine that can be disrupted. There's also Range 13, which is a special four-cell wing within the special housing unit for inmates who are in need of the tightest control within ADX. You have to be a real special piece of work to be kept in this unit. As of 2022, the only publicly known inmates who were once incarcerated in this unit were Thomas Silverstein, considered one of the most violent prisoners in the United States, and Ramzi Youssef one of the main perpetrators of the 1993 World Trade Center bombing. There are two intermediate units that are housed what are known as step-down inmates. These inmates can earn a transfer to another institution if they keep on their best behavior during their incarceration. This is the only unit in ADX where inmates secure themselves in their own cells, have the freedom to walk around in their range and associate with other inmates. Then there are the general population units called Delta, Echo, Fox, and the Gulf units. For an hour each day, inmates are allowed out of their cells for exercise and phone calls if they've earned the privilege. They exercise in a concrete pit that resembles an empty swimming pool, also strategically designed to prevent inmates from knowing their exact location in the facility. The pit is large enough only for a prisoner to walk 10 steps in a straight line or 31 steps in a circle. Good behavior might earn inmates more outside time and a possible transfer away from this veritable hellhole for the most fortunate. Life in a cell at the Florence Supermax. Inmates here suffer through 23 hours of single cell confinement under 24 hour supervision with only one hour a day to exercise or socialize. Picture sitting locked up in a tiny seven by 12 foot room all day by yourself. That's basically a day in the life of a supermax inmate. The prison cells are designed as soundproof rooms with a single four inch slit for a window, their only access to the outside world. Each cell features a desk, stool, and bed constructed almost entirely out of poured concrete. 
The rooms are deliberately designed to stifle inmates' freedoms and to stop them from potentially becoming a danger to themselves or others. The toilets are designed to shut off if an inmate decides to clog it, and the showers run on a scheduled timer. The sinks are also designed without taps just in case someone tries to fashion it into a weapon or to use it to commit self-harm. Entertainment in these cells is, unsurprisingly, very little. If you aren't staring at a light bulb all day, you might be lucky enough to have a radio, or in very rare cases you might be one of those good behavior inmates that have the privileges of a TV in their cell. Even the 4 inch by 4 foot windows can't provide much in the way of entertainment. They are deliberately designed to prevent inmates from knowing their specific location within the complex. All they can see is the sky and the rooftops through them, making it virtually impossible to plan an escape. Basically, life inside this prison can be described in one word, isolating. Inmates barely get to see outside of their cells. Food is hand-delivered to each of the prisoner's cells to prevent the need for a mess hall. Reports from a guided tour of the prison described an astonishing and eerie quiet within its walls. 60 Minutes producer Henry Schuster once stated, A few minutes inside that cell and two hours inside Supermax was enough to remind me why I left high school a year early. The walls close in very fast. Inmates' daily nutrition is also controlled, way more than you might expect in a typical prison. They're given specific meals to ensure they don't use the food to hurt themselves or cause unsanitary conditions in their cell. Escape proof. The Florence Supermax has a reputation for being escape proof. No one, since its creation, has managed to escape the facility. Besides what you might have already gleaned from my description of the facility and the cells, the prison has a bevy of security measures to keep prisoners inside like multiple motion detectors, cameras, and 1,400 remote-controlled steel doors. The cells also have electric lights that can only be turned off or on remotely, making 24-hour surveillance very easy. If prisoners try anything funny, guards have the ability to trigger a panic button, which seals all doors in the institution, making an already difficult escape near impossible. It's not as if making it to the outer perimeters means you're home free either. There are pressure pads and 12-feet razor-wired walls that encircle the perimeter, which is monitored by heavily armed guards, who are trained to shoot first and ask questions later. It's not all doom and gloom. For some lucky inmates, all they have to do is just wait it out. Florence Supermax was never really designed to hold inmates for a very long time. The long-term goal of Florence was originally to keep most inmates for about three years and then to transfer them to less restrictive prison to serve the remainder of their sentences. Only 5% of inmates reportedly serve their entire time at the Supermax, while the remaining 95% get transferred at some point. Famous inmates at the Supermax leaders of organized crime syndicates. Joaquin El Chapo Guzman is the former leader of the Sinaloa cartel and is widely considered to have been one of the most powerful drug traffickers in the world. That is, until he was extradited to the United States in 2019, where he was incarcerated in Florence Supermax. Unlike him, Larry Hoover was not extradited, as he was the co-founder of the American street gang, the Gangster Disciples. And despite pleas for his release from people like Kanye West, Hoover is currently serving six life sentences at the Florence Supermax for conspiracy, extortion, money laundering, and running a criminal enterprise. Domestic Terrorists During his campaign, Ted John Kaczynski, aka the Unabomber, mailed 16 homemade bombs that ultimately killed three people before he was found in 1996. Charged with three counts of homicide and 10 federal violations related to bombs, Kaczynski was sentenced to eight lifetimes in prison. He's an inmate of the infamous Bombers Row in the Florence Supermax, where you'll find other bombers like Tsiokar A. Tsarnaev, aka the Boston Bomber, along with his brother Tamerlan Tsarnaev, they built two pressure cooker bombs and planted them at the 2013 Boston Marathon, killing three and injuring more than 250 others. Zorkar is currently serving life. International terrorists Umar Abdul Mutalab, aka the underwear bomber, is the terrorist who attempted to detonate plastic explosives hidden in his underwear while on board a flight from Amsterdam to Detroit, nearly killing 289 people. He was sentenced to four life terms plus 50 years without parole. There's also Ramzi Ahmed Yusuf, who is serving life plus 240 years for his involvement on February 26, 1993, in a terrorist attack at the North Tower of the World Trade Center. Serial Killers Florence Supermax isn't just filled with terrorists, though. There are also serial killers, like Michael Swango, nicknamed Dr. Death, serving three consecutive life terms. Michael Swango used his medical license to poison patients and colleagues. It is believed that Swango murdered more than 60 people. Espionage Robert Hansen was a double agent who spied for Soviet and Russian intelligence against the United States from 1979 to 2001 and is currently serving 15 consecutive life sentences without parole at Florence Supermax. 
controversies. Speaking of espionage inmates, there's one potential new inmate who's been really popular in recent decades, Julian Assange. In 2020, after the capture of Julian Assange, a British magistrate refused to extradite him to the United States on espionage charges, in part because Assange would very likely be subjected to solitary confinement and special administrative measures at Florence Supermax. Activists rallied against Assange being extradited, as rumor had it that he was in already bad mental condition, and based on its reputation, the Florence Supermax would definitely tip him over the edge. A reputation not unfounded. No one has ever escaped the ADX Florence Supermax, at least not physically, and there has been one homicide in the prison. Despite the extreme security measures to deter disruptive, violent, and dangerous behavior, Silvestre Rivera and Richard Santiago were both charged with the first-degree murder of Manuel Torres, a high-level member of the Mexican Mafia. That, coupled with the multiple suicides that have occurred at Florence Supermax, this prison has been at the center of serious debates about human rights and solitary confinement's effect on mental health for some time now. As Robert Hood, a former warden at the prison, told the New York Times in 2015, this place is not designed for humanity, describing the prison as a cleaner version of hell. Florence Supermax operates under a strategy of sensory deprivation and solitude. The inmates are left to their own thoughts, which can lead to hallucinations, memory loss, and an increase in irrational behaviors. Activists cite numerous studies supporting this conclusion. In 2012, 11 inmates at the Florence Supermax filed a federal class action suit against the Bureau of Prisons. The suit alleged chronic abuse and failure to properly diagnose prisoners who were seriously mentally ill. The full extent of the trauma these prisoners go through is not even available to the public. Certain inmates held in a special unit of the prison are subject to certain administrative measures which prevent them from communicating with journalists and from communicating privately with their own lawyers or family members. Concerns about the mental health of inmates might be waved off because, after all, Florence Supermax is holding some of the most heinous criminals imaginable. If you enjoyed this video, you should click on a video on the screen. It's pretty good too, just like this one. See you there.